I will give the floor to the last speaker, Hernán Serrano León, who is going to talk about the economical potential of investing in breeding forest material. Okay. Hello, everybody. Well, first of all, thank you, Bruno, for inviting me for this conference. And it's for me an honor to close this high-level conference with 30 presentations with experts, uh, worldwide experts in genomics, in genetics, in forest management. And so thank you. No, no pressure at all. <laughs> well, my name is Hernán Serrano León. Uh, I, I, I am, I was, I used to be a junior researcher at the FE Atlantic, uh, FE plant uh, uh, office until it closed in December. Um, well, genetic improvement is in forest material has a large potential for a sustainable intensification of, of planted forest. But today I'm going to present you some of the results about the management and silvicultural potential of tree breeding in Europe. This, pre this presentation is based in four uh, European study cases done within the framework of the Gentry project as part of the task 5.4. Improving the productivity and management of planted forests is essential for a economy transition that aims to address the growing global demands for wood resources and also for climate change mitigation. One way to achieve this sustainable intensification of forest management is by investing in improved genetically forest, uh, genetically improved forest reproductive material. The production of this breeding, this improved material is the result of breeding programs that they are based on the selection and control breeding of genetically superior trees. The use of, of this breeding material in reforestation increases forest growth and resources quality, as well as improves the, the tree survival to adverse conditions. This in turn results to a reduction of the production uh, required area for required land area for production while increasing its climate change mitigation capacity. In this way, the breeding contributes to the sustainable use and um, conservation of the European and forest, uh, forest resources, so hashtag genetics to the rescue. In order to assess the potential, of poten the potential of tree breeding, we analyzed the silvicultural and microeconomic effects of the use of genetically improved material. We focus, on the, we focus our research on the stand level performance from the forest owner perspective, that is the one that's investing on, the, on reforestation material. We selected four study cases in two species in three European, in three European countries. Those are Maritime pine in, uh, in, in, in France, uh, Scots pine in central France, Scots pine in central Finland, and Scots pine in central Sweden. But uh, for the sake of the simplicity and, and also so that we can go earlier to the, to the social dinner, I will focus my results mainly on the, on the first studies also because of the similar, similarity in the breeding programs and conditions in between Finland and Sweden. So I will focus mainly on Finland. I said on Sweden, sorry. Sorry for the Swedish. But I have the results, so if you're interested, we can discuss it afterwards. Uh, for these study cases, we consider the current breeding generations that are commercially available for forest owners, that they are, remember that, that I will use them always with the blue bowl throughout the, my, my presentation, as well as the new breeding generations that they will be soon available in the market that they have been marked in orange. For each breeding generation, we consider the genetic, uh, the specific growth gains in mean production over the rotation that has been reported in literature. These genetic gains estimations range from 7% in the Scots pine breeding program in France up to 30 and 40% for the maritime pine breeding program in France. While for the for the case of Finland and Sweden, the first generation, they can reach 10% uh, of, 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 of growth gains. And the soon available generation will reach, for both uh, countries, at 25%. The stand level growth was modeled 
uh, by incorporating these reported genetic gains into a specific, uh, specific forest simulators for each study case. Uh, one thing to, to consider here is that these forest simulators has, are widely used in, uh, to compare the effects of different alternatives in management, but they are based on deterministic uh, models and they don't account for climate change. Uh, so, use the disclaimer before the reign of critics. <laughs> For each breeding generation, different civicultural scenarios were performed, and they were compared with a standard reference, uh, reference business as usual scenario that is, compared, is here in black, uh, using an improved regeneration material under a standard civicultural regime. Then we consider two genetic uh, scenarios in which we use uh, each of the we use it for each for each uh, generation. Uh, Sorry, for each breeding generation, we consider two management scenarios. One in which we maintain the same rotation ages and thinning regime as in the reference scenario. That it will be, this will result, this is the sample for, for the maritime pine case study. This results in increased production gains. And a, a, a third scenario, management scenario, in which in which we use the breeding material, but then we adapt the silvicultural regime to the prevailing silvicultural recommendations that they, they are used. So this, uh, this results into reduction of the rotation ages and earlier thinnings. Uh, well, here in the results of the growth simulations, so that the use of breeding, the use of breeding material, result on large, uh, large production gains that can be translated into rotation reductions. The, for the higher growth uh, gains in maritime pine, the 30% uh, of the current generation can be translated to a reduction of six years, while the 40% of the new available BF3 generation could be translated into a rotation reduction of eight years and. We should consider that for such an intensive uh, forestry system with only 45 uh, years, this is quite a, a huge reduction. Um, even for a small, relatively moderate uh, increase in, in, in growth gain, this can be translated into a large uh, reduction for the case of a Scots pine in France, into a large re uh, rotation reduction. That for such large rotations, this, this is quite uh, impressive. And for the cases of Finland, um, the 10% um, production gains, they can, be re uh, re they can reduce the rotation in seven years and the new available generations into 13 years. Well, based on this growth simulation, we assess the financial performance in euros per hectare in terms of soil expectation value. For those on, of you that you are not so uh, aware, uh, so used to this term, it represents the net economic balance of the uh, wood production incomes minus the silvicultural, uh, minus the silvicultural cost that over infinite rotations. And they are actualized to a percent day value with a discount rate of 3% that is commonly used in, uh, in forestry. To take into account the effect of different wood prices scenarios, we conducted a sensitivity analysis with three scenarios. The maximum average and minimum wood prices for the years 2013 and 2017. Um, it's important here to note the differences on the available data. While, well, for example, in France, the available data for the prices, they were, they were like price curves per unit volume, so we have the unit, unitary tree volume and then the price on the, on the stand. For the uh, case of Finland and Sweden, the available data was given as average prices by wood assortment and felling. This will have implications in the, in the, in the assessment. Well, despite the, here you, we can see the three different scenarios, don't worry about so many, so many bars. Here, the importance is that there are large differences between cases, but the main result is that compared with the reference scenario, the use of genetically improved uh, material increased the profitability in all cases. And this is due to the higher productivity or the earlier incomes 
from the using the the genetically improved material that at the same time has a very few a very low extra seedling cost for the for the forest owners. If we focus only on the on the average price scenario to simplify things, the economic gain from breeding from breeding material varies largely depending on the both the study case, the generation, and the the silvicultural scenario. The, and the level of genetic gain had a strong impact on the economic, uh, the financial import uh, in performance, with higher profitability when using material from more advanced uh, generations. For example, for the case of Finland, of Scots pine in Finland, the first generation in blue with a, ooh, almost no battery, uh, with a 10% of, with, okay, no. With a 10% of genetic gain can result on economic gains of 20% or 30% when, when the rotation was shortened. For the second generation with a 25% uh, of the economic gain, the, uh, of, gen of growth gain, the economic gain can, be, can range between 44% and 67% when the rotation was shortened. Then for the Scots pine in France, uh, given the lower profitability, well, the, the relatively the change in the, the, the economic gains, they are relatively large. Like for example, for the 7% of, uh, of growth gain, we, reach, we can have a, an economic gain of almost 60% and almost 100% uh, when, when we maintain the same civil cultural uh, regime. And finally, the more important uh, economic gains were in the more advanced, uh, uh, more intensive forestry system of, uh, of uh, maritime pine in France, where the current generation has, uh, with a 30% of growth gain, resulted in a 60%, 61% of economic gain when the rotation was shortened, and 85% maintaining the same rotation, while for a 40% of, of growth gain, the economic gains uh, vary from 77% to 150% when maintaining the same rotation. So despite the, large, despite the large differences between cases, the main result here is that even a small percentage of, of growth gain can be translated into a large uh, percentage of economic gain. And also, as we have discussed, that there are differences uh, it is important to know that there are different effects of the reduction of the reduction of the rotation. Like, for example, while for Finland, the, they were more. Oh, yeah, that was that. So while in Finland, uh, they were financially performing better when the rotation was certain. For the French study cases, the, they were performing better when maintaining the same, the same rotation. But this can be easily explained by the uh, price assumptions that we were using. For, for the French study cases with the price curves, when we were maintaining the same long rotation, then we were having higher price, prices, uh, higher uh, good prices. While for, uh, for the Finnish study case, Maintaining, uh, maintaining long term, uh, well, there was a major uh, effect from, from reducing the, um, the rotation that for maintaining long term, the, uh, the high, high large, uh, large trees. Uh, wrapping up these results, evidence that the increased profitability of using genetically improved material uh, from developed from develop breeding programs. One important take home message is that even a small percentage of uh, realized genetic gains in growth can be translated into a large uh, economic gains for the forest owners. And in addition to the production increase, there are other benefits from using, uh, from using breeding material for forest owners. And for example, as so by the by the higher profitability in all prices scenarios, investing in breeding, in breeding material can provide a financial stability for forest owners against the fluctuations in the price fluctuations in the wood markets. Moreover, the possibility to reduce the rotation ages gives uh, forest owners a more uh, flexible silvicultural response to adapt to, 
to reduce the risk of natural disasters and also to adapt to uncertain environmental and uh, climatic and socioeconomic uh, circumstances. And finally, the shorter rotations allow the forest owners to, pro uh, to, to profit earlier from the new generations, new breeding generations available in the market. And the use of these new, gener new generations with improved genetic gains and, uh, and adaptation can also avoid to reduce the genetic diversity in forest plantations from, uh, in, in long rotations. So similar economic studies to what we, these examples, uh, can encourage forest owners and forest managers and, uh, and authorities to invest in innovative forest genetic resources for a sustainable management int intensification. However, it's important to remark the challenges and the limitations of this kind of economic uh, in, uh, assessments in which we assess uh, the economic impact from genetically improved material without considering climate change impacts. Uh, genetically, uh, genetic growth gains in breeding are usually just uh, rough estimations, rough estimations from early gains in young trails, whose major performance under a certain climate uh, climate conditions is uncertain. Therefore, if we really want to assess the potential of performance of breeding material, further research is needed considering the economic impact of climate change as well as including multiple breeding objectives besides increased growth, from uh, adaptation to variable site conditions to higher tolerance to natural hazards, and from improved resource uh, use efficiency to good quality traits. Because all these different trade values can be subject to trade-offs between them, and they need to be weighted in the economical analysis. They be, need to be weighted accordingly to their adaptation, their sustainability, and also their economical importance. So, but thanks to the work done with the Gen3, uh, and thanks to the work of all the partners, the results of, of these projects can result, uh, well, can, can provide the scientific base for the development of future generations of breeding, uh, of breeding, uh, of tree breeding in Europe that can help the sustainable use and management of, and conservation of the forest resources in Europe. And with that, well, thank you very much. And also, we'd like to say to uh, thanks to EFI, the Gentry, and also some of the some of some more partners that they have provided the simulators to to do this exercise. The floor is open for questions. And I'm, I'm aware that uh, when you did the review of these economic effects, what has been uh, studied before, it was mainly in Scandinavia. And uh, I was just wondering, like, did you find uh, further uh, studies where this was studied outside of the Scandinavian forestry context? And, and um, how is this step now to actually have comparison across different countries? How, how much is this different from what we knew before? Is there some other more studies along similar lines from other regions which were not covered by, by this research? Thank you, Marcus. Well, it's, it's true. Like uh, the current literature is quite limited and is mainly focused on on Scandinavian uh, countries and mainly uh, Finno Scandinavian countries, mainly in in Finland. They have uh, they are quite advanced, not just with the breeding programs, but also with the research. Uh, even though they have all, there are other breeding, advanced breeding programs in Europe, mainly in France, they, they are not such kind of uh, studies, economical studies about the implications of, of, of breeding into, into that. So that brings a, an added, uh, this is the added up of, added, valid, uh, added of, of this project. Uh, we wanted to compare more in a European level and uh, with uh, other, other breeding programs, also using uh, other species, but we were quite limited uh, on the first stages of this study because um, we found that well, the, uh, is, there, there were many there were many initiatives about breeding in many in many species in different countries uh, during the 60s, uh, 80s, uh, 90s, but they they stopped. They were due to um, well lack of public funding or 
So we couldn't find uh, the available data to, we, we couldn't find the realized get genetic gains. So yeah, I think that these results can be, uh, well, can be, can be a good idea, also, not just to show the, the forest owners, the potential, but also to show the forest administrations, the potential of investing on, on this, this kind of, of, of breeding programs. One final question, if there's any. Uh, thanks, Hernan, for your talk. I would like to ask you, if, uh, what do you think if, the, if by increasing the number of rotations can have any negative impact in the, in the soils? Like uh, impoverish the soils and the, the gain that you are expected is not possible because of that? I don't know. Yeah, well, definitely every, every um, practice that leads to intensification of forest management can have uh, negative impacts. And that's, uh, that's the, the main limitation of just focusing on forest growth, on, on growth production, just focusing on, on reducing rotation. Um, so for sure, any, um, any kind of intensification has to be also assessed in, uh, on the potential impacts and try to remediate that. But, uh, like, like we saw, there is, uh, that's, that gives you in, uh, having uh, in, investing in, in, in breeding in breeding material allows you a flexible uh, uh, a flexible uh, management. So you can con maintain the same uh, the same rotation, but you can also shorten due to uh, con uh, environmental or socioeconomical conditions. That uh, so it can it gives the forest owner more diversity. That is also good to have uh, diversity in, in management to, to adapt to, to climate change and, and global changes. Thank you.